Oh, 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 red matter. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Hola y saludos a todos. El cique batió que orden. SliceofSciFi.com and that is my new ringtone. I'm Michael Arman and Kay. I'm 95% Red Matter, and I'm Brian Brown. I am my brand new Charles David Wedge that manages to be neutral yet colorful all at the same time. Wow, that's pretty. I am Tim <laughs> Adamick, and I grow cyanide grapes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, I'm Brett Filipek, and I don't. <laughs> I'm Megan Zier. Let's get going. Let's get going. Let's get there we going. go. Okay, I'm I'm good with that. Uh, this is the voicemail show, listener, or the feedback, listener show, feedback show, or whatever. whatever the hell you want to call it. We this talk is that about show. It. This, this is our opportunity to this drink. This is that show. <laughs> this is this is the show that uh, that we have because we don't have that other show that shall not be named because we don't have. And we need better. an occasion to drink. Um, let, let's let's play some voicemail. Okay. Right. Hey, slicers, rinse one year. Hello. Just wanted to thank you guys again for a great pool party. Yes. I do have a question, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What the hell did you put in the pool water? <laughs> I what? showed up Why? in Arizona with a girlfriend and left with a fiancé. <gasps> yeah. wow. That just doesn't Woo. randomly happen. You had to diffuse pheromones into the water or something. You brought her out here and showed her how freaking cool you are and the cool people that you know, and she just knew she had to have you. That's all it Suddenly, is. Suddenly, I'm glad I didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Also, uh, bam, your, your fiancé, is that what happened to him? Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, wow. Terrifying. Is, is that like the, the, the slice of sci-fi version of knighting someone? Uh, uh, no. no. I, I hope not. There we go. Howdy, Slashers. This is Eddie from California. And uh, I'm calling in about the Green Lantern's uh, future husband getting killed off. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. All I know is, is he really dead or is he just comic book dead? Because uh-huh. we may just made wait a couple of issues. So, oh, really is nice. that what I missed last week? They killed the fiance? Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. sorry. That's really? annoying. Yeah. That's kind of awesome. It's kind of annoying. Yeah. Yeah. It's typical. That's awesome. It's, it's like, hey, typical, we're going to do this. Joss did it already. <laughs> He's going to come back as the Red Lantern. They're going to be nice Christmas colors. Wow. Oh, what? Well, uh, uh, I just uh, ah. you, no more talking for you, Philip Heck. <laughs> Where's the yellow card? <laughs> yes. Where's my yellow card? Hey, Fletchers. This is Evan from Tallahassee. Third attempt at this message. I think I'm continually being cut off. Oh, However, so yes, you are. Yes to Katy Perry. She looks the part. The mm-hmm. question is, can she stay the line? No. But the bigger issue is, why are we making a sequel to Blade Runner? Yeah. There's no point in it. There's no point in it. Nobody understands that movie anymore. <laughs> you cannot make a sequel that does justice to the original and have anyone go see it and do anything other than go, what did we just watch? Yeah. And yeah, if you make a sequel that does not do justice to the original, then you have this random piece of crap that probably will have nothing to do with the original that has everybody else going, why? <laughs> yeah. That well, I don't think they actually were going to do a sequel. I think they're going to do maybe a prequel. Mm. Well, that I need to stop missing these shows. You Why really are we do. talking about Katy Perry in a Blade Runner sequel? <laughs> <laughs> Go back, listen. Damn it. You really should listen. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> she, now that I think about it, she does look exactly she does. like her. Though, like she, does. She, yeah, does. she does. She does, she does. and that's kind of what she was hinting at. Because yeah. she wants to get into film. Oh, well, yeah. Of course she of course does. She yeah. She'd be better in she should start you playing she, a robot. That's cool. She's very well spoken, though. I, I have is. heard her talk. She oh, is. She is. But. I just don't think that... I think he's right, though. Why would we want to have a Blade Runner sequel? I, you can just do an hour and a half of essentially instructions on how to fold origami unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that That's would true. be good, actually. I'd be all I'm right. pretty good at that. that. I'm I'm a big Katy Perry fan, so I'm, I'm Me too. all good with her no matter doing how much more. I want She's right. my two best friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's true. Hi, Slicers. Theresa from Annapolis calling. Howdy. Listen, here's the thing I yeah. don't get about Here all is. the Higgs boson talk. Mm-hmm. Why are people saying it boson? I'm from Annapolis. We're a sailing town, home of the United States Naval Academy <laughs> and a monster two-week yeah, international boat show every boson. year. And we know what a boson is. A boson, boson. is the foreman of the deckhands, not some elemental right. particle. So isn't it boson? You know, like electron, boson. proton? Yes. Just asking. 
Yes, it is. Just yes. ask on. It it's, is Bozon. Bozon. Yes. Yes, it is. Because it's named after the dude. What was his name? Was it Bose? Higgs. 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 No, but there's a second dude <laughs> yes. where Boson came from. You are, you are correct. He's are Indian? Correct. Yes. 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 And I assume it would be pronounced he, close to whatever his name was pronounced, right? right? Like, is it Bose? He's Higgs. I'm Hudson. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Ah, there you go. <laughs> it's because the Boson is not with the Boson. So. Right. Well, the Boson's down in the forecastle. I thought I thought it, it, I thought Bosun's what, where the donuts were at. What about what? Bo- Bosun Donuts? Did you ever go to no. Bosun Donuts? No, no. never been. No. Mr. Try donuts. again, Mr. Poop. Oh, it's Bosa Donuts. Fail. Welcome again, Bosa Mr. Poop Fail. Deck. Poop <laughs> Deck. That's what we're calling you from now on. <laughs> He's poop Deck. Deck. Actually, his new nickname is Gumdrop. Oh, you know why? I, 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 okay, it, it, it's, moving along. It, it's time for some. It, it's time for some sweet leaf. The Adventures of Sweet Leaf. Okay, I think. Try it now. Testing. One, two. Ouch! You all right in there? Yeah, just a little short. That didn't sound so little. What, you're going to make short jokes now? No, no. I just meant that it sounded kind of serious. Well, it is serious. Are you going to be able to fix it, or do we need to call in a professional? I am a professional. Yeah, but if it's something you can't handle, we need to get someone in to fix it. What, are you saying I can't handle the board now? Don't get your knickers in a twist. I wouldn't say anything about you. We need to get this rig up and recording soon. We already missed a week. I'm working on it. As you'll notice, there ain't much space between the gnome's knickers and his knees, so they tend to twist kind of easy at sizes remarks. I didn't mean to be sizest. Sorry, it's just hard to do good work with substandard equipment. What do you mean, substandard equipment? Just look at this junk. It looks like it was cobbled together out of scraps and spare parts. Typical pixie work. Oh, yeah? This mixer must be 20 years old. You can see where it was taken apart and repaired. And look at the rest of this stuff. I'll bet Klimper Belt built it herself from bits she got at the pawn shop. I know it's old, but you say it isn't any good? Only a pixie would use shit like this. Really? So what should we do about it? I say scrap the whole thing and start over with new equipment. All of it? Why not? It probably has a lot of sentimental value to the pixie because she obviously built it herself. But we don't need to keep any of this junk. Why don't you take the rest of the day off and let me decide what to do about this? Sure, I'll bring in a few catalogs tomorrow. We can start picking out gear for a really good setup. Okay, you can take off now. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Oh, Ned? Yeah? Before you go, I just thought you should know. Klimperbell didn't build this equipment herself. You sure? It looks like a typical pixie mess to me. Yeah, I'm sure. I built it before I ever met Klimperbell. Oh, shit. Viewing log. Start a viewing log. Start eight. Something, 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 something. I'm here to report that I have now finished my journey, at the beginning of my journey, to watch all of Star Trek. I finished Enterprise. Now for the culture shock. Jumping from that to the original series. This should be interesting. This has been, as always, surreal. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. awesome. Nice. Outstanding. Every episode, holy wow. cow. Chronologically. That's, oh, wow. That, so that's interesting. How would you do that chronologically? Some of them you, took You place. have to start with Enterprise. But yeah, but some of them like, overlapped. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I oh, wonder wow. how diligent he yeah. was. Yeah. Well, you know... you. <sighs> So, like, know. what about, like, when they go, when the um, DS9 folks go back to Trouble with Tribbles? Like, right. right. How do yeah. you, do, right. you have how to do kind you... of watch those on two televisions at the same time. Right? In order <laughs> right. to be completely faithful. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Did, did he mean chronologically, like, I think yeah, like he did. Yeah, he universe. did start with Enterprise. Yeah. I know he said that before. But so. is he doing it chronologically by series or chronologically in actual chronological in, order? In the I canon, I guess. It depends I think on mechanically in the yes. universe, I think he's doing it. I think wow. it's an interesting experiment in w- how would you watch that series chronologically. Well, everything has, like a, everything has a star date to it. So you True. could go back you, and get the Not all episodes, but most, most, of, them do. most of them do. The, the It'd al- still be tough. The Almanac app I had on my previous phone, I think it was an Android, had, um, had star date on it. Cool. It was really? very helpful. You, so I'm sure you can find something out there to help you. Oh, yeah. So mm. I still want to know why they call you Gumdrop. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I guess we'll move <laughs> along for right now. Please. Come back to the story in just a bit. Please. Mr. Big Bucks, here's the movie of the century. Piranacondo. <laughs> it's got everything you need for a big Hollywood movie. Oh, yeah. You got piranhas. Yeah. You got penises. Yeah. You got piranhas. You got penises. <laughs> Here's how it went. Some Yahoo in the Midwest comes up with the idea. You know, latex is great, but I need fish skin for my condoms. It's cheap, and it feels great. So 
we goes on a search for any cheap fish kid. What fishes do people catch but they don't eat? Piranhas! Little does he know that piranhas use magical creatures like fairies and unicorns. And when you kill a piranha, his soul stays there. God help the man who puts on a piranha candle with the soul of the piranha still in the candle. Can you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> Bravo! <laughs> Oh my God! Who was that? <laughs> because that voice was hilarious. Yes. Awesome. That was buckets of awesome. I, I don't I don't care. I just want more. Oh God, yeah, right? Right? And, and I I want a new Piranhas? film from Pizzas. you every single week. Right. This needs this demands a T-shirt. <laughs> totally. Totally needs a T-shirt. I would wear that to work. It'd be my last day, but I would wear that. Oh. <laughs> all all awesome. started by just a misheard quote. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, so. absolutely. Oh. Wow. And uh, and uh, if we shall shall we introduce the creator of that wonderful segment right here. Hello, my science fiction slicing friends. This is uh, Edward from Telhead. Point of fact <laughs> regarding your. Uh, discussion of soundtracks. Point of fact, uh, had there been no Holst and no Planet Suite, uh, there would have been no soundtrack for Star Wars. True. Um, that's William, true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, let's just say he cribbed maybe a, a, some yeah. of yeah. Holst work for a bar, a bar or two. Star Wars. Uh, a, a bar, yeah. yeah. Just, Which was about James note. Horner. James Horner is at least uh, not, uh, he doesn't really hide the fact that he, he steals. Uh, I mean, borrows. Borrows, borrows. Uh, yes, borrows. John Williams, as much as Homage. I have uh, vague respect for the guy, he's the biggest he's, borrower yeah. of them all. Pretty blatant about it. That's it, yeah. kids. Keep it slicey. <laughs> <laughs> Aww, Keep it slicey. <laughs> That's us, yes. We're all about slicey. <laughs> so, what exactly would the soundtrack to Piranha Condom be like? <laughs> uh, you know, I think that's uh, the next step. Yeah, I'm a little bit. Yeah. 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 It's going to be somewhere between that and Jaws. like death metal. <laughs> or Jaws. Oh and Jaws. Jaws. Porn, Jaws porn. Jaws. Jaws. Yeah. Combination of Jaws and Deep Throat. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, uh, Bad wow. guitar and piano. Wow, wow. This is going <laughs> great places. Somebody is to, uh, whoa, wow. Wow. Stop. All, all a matter of perspective. <laughs> Stop us now before we drink some more. Press the yes. button, Mike. Press the button. And I'm not even drinking. Hey guys, wrap it out here. So, uh, Katy Perry wants to act, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, fine. We'll put her in Blade Runner, put her in Blade Runner. But uh, Rachel, you know, that's kind of a pivotal role. I, I don't know. I'd take a risk on putting an unproven actress in that role. Really? I'll tell you what, though. We could see her as Zora, you know, with that snake and uh, see through PVC outfit and stuff like that. Getting shot. I could go nice get shot. behind that. Yeah. And what do you guys think? Eight seconds of screen time? Yeah. yeah. I, no, uh, I'd actually, I, I'd like to see her in that. I, I would like to see Katy Perry in a role. Period. I, I would. I really want to see what she can do. I think so she's got it. Would we see a reimagining of Blade Runner? Maybe because mm-hmm. that's what people no. are talking about yeah. is reimagining, yeah, right? Could, yeah. But also, I mean, Sean Young wasn't that accomplished. Sean Young of an, is not a no. good actress, and she wasn't that she accomplished not. of an actress when she was in Blade Runner. True. Oh, no, true. she was very robotic in Blade Runner. You know, I mean, that she was, was, she, she, she was, was never a great actress. No. Right. I'm sorry, and she never no. got really good. And the bigger the crazy so. got, the worse she got. Oh yeah. yes. Yeah. I disagree. Ace Ventura, she was awesome in. <laughs> wow. No. 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 Okay then. Move. Moving on. Hey, Slicers. Rince one here. I wanted to send out a quick RIP to Ernest Borgnine. Yes. yes. Among his many roles, he did some genre stuff, such as Gattaca, Escape from New York, The Black Hole, Future Cop, etc. Airwolf. Ernie Airwolf. had a special connection to us in Wisconsin. Red. For those who don't know, Johnny Carson once asked him on The Tonight Show what role he'd like to play since he'd done so much in his career. Mr. Borgnine replied that he'd never been a clown. For the next 30 years, he was the chief clown for the Great Circus Parade. 
an annual two-hour extravaganza traveling through the streets of Milwaukee consisting of the old-timey, incredibly ornate circus wagons. Huh. Rest in peace, Ernie. You'll be missed. Awesome. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yes, you will. Yeah. Very cool stuff. In fact, uh, I was just I was just rewatching Red for like the 1100th time the other day. It's such a rewatchable movie. That, oh, it's an mm-hmm. incredible movie. The more I watch that, the better it gets. And Ernest uh, and, yeah. and, and mm-hmm. his his That's role right. in that yeah. he was is in the just, basement in the archives. In the it, it, right. I was wondering if that was probably one of. I think that might be one probably of his, his last, last role. role. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and in there, I mean, he's still, small but memorable. Small but memorable. Yeah. I mean, it was it, it was such a key pivotal piece of that of that movie and. Uh, he did have a face that was hard to forget. Yeah, he did. That's for sure. Mm. Hey, Slicers. Rincewind here. No, anyone who knows me knows that I like my wine. But what Andrea and I found up in Jerome, Jerome. scared me. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. That's me. What you guys are squeezing to make wine in Arizona, I don't know, but I'm definitely not buying this stuff. Merkin Vineyards? Oh, yeah. Yes. I sent a couple pictures along, but uh, just so you know, yeah. we didn't buy anything there. Oh, you should have. Oh, you absolutely should have. Oh, oh. sure. You don't know who's, whose vineyard that is, then. That's yeah. the guy from Tool. It's Maynard James mm-hmm. Keenan. Maynard James Keenan. I think he dropped the Maynard now. I think he just goes by James. James, yes, yep. he does. Yeah. Oh, okay. He, um, he has the vineyard up there. There's a Pussifer store up in Jerome. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's sort of he's big the, in that he's, area. He's a big thing there. Yeah. He had, uh, actually, a friend of mine was just up there, I think, the past weekend, and uh, um, he was in the, in the store. Yeah. And uh, brought up, uh, what was it, the 2005 Judith that nobody can get a hold of, mm-hmm. which is evidently one of the, the best wines that he's done and, mm. and had just gave everybody in the store a taste. Tasting. And if you That's really nice. want to get in depth with it, there is actually, if on your Netflix, go check out Netflix, there is actually a documentary on them and they, true, they're yeah. creating creating this vineyard and this wine and Maynard's uh, being uh, building this this thing from mm-hmm. nothing mm-hmm. Yeah. and it is absolutely fascinating and it'll make you want to go there and and uh, buy stuff he's getting just more to support and, what he's and doing he's getting more and more serious about it too which yeah. is really yeah. starting to show in his later wines what yeah. are the grapes coming from they, they come from just down the, the valley yeah, yeah. in uh, cottonwood they near cottonwood? Yeah. Cottonwood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. they're local grapes here oh yeah, well, yeah. so you can't really grow them on the side of the hill in Jerome so no, 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 no. No. they're <laughs> coming from no, if you look at the picture you'll see where the grapes come from yeah there you go that's that's where the grapes come from i love you well you know it was maynard from tool so (laughs) there you go let's play a game okay okay scary noises (gasps) yeah (laughs) boy you got a pretty mouth (laughs) squeal squeal Creepy. That's creepy. Yep, we got it. We got a little pretty mouth thing. That's yeah. right. That's the truth. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> I can't. I can't even hear that and not get the heat. You know, it's just so. Yeah. There, there is a, there is a time Poor in baby. a, there is a time in every young man's life when they can hark back and realize, remember when they watched <gasps> that film oh, yeah. in that the changed their life. life. Interestingly it, enough, you know, yes. we were just watching what was it Boogie Nights that was out there, right? yeah. and I saw mm-hmm. that once in my life, and I really don't remember anything. I saw that movie once in my life, and, and I never, never forgot to get it. Forget that movie. Just, between no. the guy tied to the tree and Burt Reynolds with a bow and arrow, you right. can't forget you can't the movie. Forget it. And the freaky kid on the porch. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yes, and you, and you think, poor Ned Beatty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor Ned. Uh, Ned. He shouldn't have gone that way. No, no. definitely. I'm Nerdpocalypse here uh, with, well, I'm a bit late on this, a Father's Day inspired epiphany. Okay. Uh, Fringe has really one of the best uh, father-son uh, dynamics of any show on TV in, in yeah. years, maybe decades. Huh. And um, I always watch with uh, my sons, and um, it's influenced to go into the sciences. Of course, uh, my younger son, son of Nerd Apocalypse, uh, <laughs> also went into the mad sciences. Um, my older son, um, Scott, is actually going into engineering. Anyway, can't win them all. Uh, Nerd Apocalypse <laughs> saying, have a nice week. Well, there you go. <laughs> you can always say to people, he's not an engineer, he's, he's a project manager. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there, you go. there you go. Nerd Apocalypse here with the Epiphany of the Week. 
I really missed the thread a bit of how this adoption thing got started, but oh, man. I just thought That's I'd throw in the obvious thing that uh, for you people with non-cloned children, I mean, half of the genes there aren't yours, so it's really like half an adoption already there. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Way to look at it scientifically. <laughs> there's a point <laughs> there. Wow, that's oh, excellent. man. Gets right down to the point right there, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, let's have a geek moment. Okay. Aloha, Slicers. This is Stephanie from Oahu with your Geek Moment of the Week. Many of us have watched in happy little geek glee over the years as the Mythbusters have built, blown up, confirmed, and busted hundreds of stories but I never thought to actually see one of their myths reported in my hometown newspaper. On June 12th, a basketball-sized chunk of ice slammed into a two-story house in one of San Francisco's East Bay suburbs. While the FAA is still investigating whether or not it really did fall from a plane, I'm willing to go out on the limb with this one. The house is directly in the flight path from San Francisco International. If not from a plane, I'm not sure where else it could have come from. Northern California is admittedly a little nutty, but not even we've managed to conjure hail on command. Uh, before you ask, no reports on whether the ice ball was blue or not. And that's been your Geek Moment of the Week. Awesome. <laughs> Very nice. It doesn't necessarily have to be... From the toilet system, right? True. Yeah, they yeah. carry water wherever there's condensation or water coming out. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, they carry they, they yeah. carry potable water in the in the yeah. system. So mm -hmm. uh, that's true. Yeah. There's a leak and, it, and it's it on the wing that. and it. Pops. It's a that's lot perfect. more fun to think of it's blue though. It it kind of is. Yeah, it's yeah. a giant blue popsicle for you, Brett. <laughs> and, see, here, and here I was kind thinking that, that Marylicious. I was thinking the MythBusters were testing another thing and shot another cannon. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> Hey, Flyzers, it's Patrick. Just uh, checking in and giving you my information on how I get the show. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. I put out a call about that a couple of weeks ago. Yes. I get it the old-fashioned way. Uh, yes, that's right. I actually broke into the office last time you guys moved and bugged the place. So <laughs> I get the complete feed, including all the side conversations. I tell you, it's uh, one of the best things I ever did. Who knew you could do that long distance? <laughs> Very nice. Fantastic. So, so, Patrick, how is Brett's nickname Gumdrop come about? Really, tell us. Yeah, Let let's, us know. Let's, let's hear about Gumdrop. Yeah, come on, Brett. What Share. Is it? What, what is, it? What no. is this Gumdrop Why? thing? Why? <laughs> no. We're all friends here. It's a circle of trust. That's right. We got your back. There's only a few thousand, hundred thousand, or two. Yeah, a few yeah. personal yeah. friends. It's all good. Yeah. Me and a few th thousands of my friends. It's Thanks, few, but yeah. exactly. There are oh. some things that should just not be repeated. Okay, okay come drop. That's cool. Black. All right, that's fine. Well, you, you, you guys know the numbers. That's 206 339 trick. That's 206 339 8735. If Brett won't tell, maybe you guys should come up with your own reason why. Yeah, why it's called gum drop. Gum drop. That's I think what it's I hear. important that you make up yep. your own story. Yeah. And share. Just, oh, what am I talking Moving right along. Hey, Slicer, it's Darko, listening to the last listener feedback show. And this is in response to uh, Gary from Jacksonville voicemail about uh, DC and killing off Alan Scott's boyfriend. Um, Look out, Arkel, you're going to die. Are you surprised, <laughs> Gary? This is DC Comics we're talking about here. They're the reason the trope known as women in refrigerators <laughs> exists. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, but Ow. that guy wasn't a woman. Yeah. yeah. So, Arkel, if you That's want Gary's fair. phone number, let me give it to you right here, right now. <laughs> nice. You can give him a call direct up, and he'd probably be glad to talk to you about it. We're not an answering service, are we? Yeah, I guess we are. Guess we are sort of are, actually. Yeah. Damn it. Hey, guys. BBS and PA here. See, we us hear about songs or tunes that we associated with TV shows and movies. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, mine are uh, two classics. The William Tell Overture, okay. mm -hmm. typically associated with the Lone Ranger, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Flight of Valkyries, associated oh, yeah. Apocalypse with Apocalypse Now. Now. Yeah. yeah. Preceding, of course, I Love the Smell of Napalm in the Morning. It's a classic. Yeah. Smells, smells like, like victory. It smells like victory. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey, Slicers, it's the Bionic Geek. Y'all were asking about songs that make and scores that yeah. bring you to a specific mm -hmm. relationship. Now, the one that comes immediately to mind for me is the music from Cosmos. Mm -hmm. Normally, oh. I can tell you what it was, but off the top of my head, it, it, I'm drawing a blank. But oh, it was absolutely gorgeous, haunting, 
and amazing. And I always, whenever I hear it, I am waiting to see Carl Sagan walk around the corner, which actually, billions, billions, I think the world billions. would be a better place if Carl Sagan still was walking around yes. corners. Word. Yeah. We, have we done a story on them redoing Cosmos? Seth, yes. Seth MacFarlane yes. producing. And yeah. is, is, am, am I right in remembering Neil yes. deGrasse Tyson is going to yes. be on that? Yes. He's it's awesome. It's going to be awesome. We need to get Neil back so on the show. So freaking excited about that. Talk to him about that. Yeah. But, cool. uh, the, uh, um, the big one that I'm uh, coming to right now is uh, um, Vangelis. You cannot yes. hear. Oh, think, you can't iconic. even hear Vangelis yeah. without yeah. thinking yeah. Chariots of Fire now. And God, what an awful... Movie. Awful movie yes. and soundtrack to be yeah to be attached. Honestly, never to. seen it, yeah. and oh, I God. still know the music. It, the 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 music just uh, the music's fine by itself. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, it just is awful matched with that movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's horrible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's one of the it's one of the rare one of the soundtracks that actually makes a movie unwatchable for me. Yeah, see, I, I'm like uh, that's a good one, but like Toto and Dune, I still. I love oh that no, one. no no no! Now no, see, no, no. Dune makes Dune unwatchable uh, I, for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Lady Hawk. Lady Hawk. And Lady Hawk, Lady Hawk yeah, yeah. is. See, I love so, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. So what about um, one, you know though. Legend um, on the DVD? You, there's oh, a different it's true. right. It's got different the soundtrack. Um, mm-hmm. different soundtrack and the, where it's the the orchestral score, which is not what it was released with, which right. I think makes it way better. Oh, it does absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Hey, slicers, it's the band Geek. Mike, there's just one problem. With mm-hmm. podcasting from space. Yeah. In space. No one can hear you scream. No one can hear your <laughs> podcast. It's true. Oh, I thought you were going to say nobody can hear me drink, but uh, <laughs> that could be bad, too. Powdered scotch? Hey, slicers, yeah. this is you know, I must be doing something right with my kids, because my oldest bought a new shirt recently, and it's got Spark on it. And he's doing the Vulcan Sloop, and it, it's kind of sideways. And it says, trick yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. Nice. That's a good one. I, like I thought he was talking about the sparker. Exactly. Yeah, right. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's not where I was going. No, no. Mm. no. Hey, Slicer, it's Rich Trampus. Well, yesterday was my 40th birthday. Happy hey. birthday. Uh, so I Damn celebrated. Kids. I got some dice. I got some RPG stuff. Got a comic. Young. You know, typical geeky stuff, but when I ended the day, I um, went to see Spider-Man. Now, Mm -hmm. loved the movie. It was really good. I thought they did a great job of modernizing the origin story while still staying true to um, the original. Mm -hmm. I give a thumbs up. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm with you. Yeah. I would like it better than the one with Tobey Maguire. I'd, I'd, I'd actually, this is what I'm actually thinking about going and seeing. I, yeah. I, yeah. Almost, yeah. I almost did. Exactly. Exactly. I'm glad I was sitting for that news. If I, <laughs> I if I would didn't have to be here tonight, I would have gone this afternoon. You can go. So you can go. No. You're dismissed. No. I can push go buttons. Away. It looks easy. I'm here. Be- can't anybody do that? I, I, I have a commitment to my peeps. You, you should be committed to your glass of scotch. Oh, you're drunk. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the TUI. <laughs> no, you you should be true. committed, all right. <laughs> I am committed. I've been committed for a while. <laughs> yes. I've been committed for a long time. Okay, one more. Okay. Hey, Slices, it's Mike from Arlington, Texas. I was just catching up on some of the, some of the episodes and decided I'd throw my two cents worth in for one of the coolest movies to watch on the new plasma screen. Oh. Okay. And I know it's not exactly sci-fi, but it is genre. One of the prettiest things that I watched after first getting my plasma screen had to be the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And their turn out amazing. So just wanted to throw my sense out. Yeah. Uh, that's and, a good one. And if the extended version, you could really enjoy that for a very yeah, for long time. 14 hours. Yeah. That's right. Really burn that TV in the first time. <laughs> and burn it out, I think, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, half, it's half your bulb life. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the true. elves, Mr. Baggins. Oh, wait, we're sorry. I'm crossing the streams. <laughs> and by yeah. the way, already psyched for The Hobbit, right? They put out the poster oh, on. Yeah. Like, oh. I cannot wait. It's going to be so they finished, awesome. They finished, I think, principal photography, right? So yeah. do, I think do so. we think that that's going to be the prequel that it's that it's going to really roll in and ramp into uh, to the Lord of the Rings? Well, I think it has to. I mean, with yeah. Peter Jackson, that involved and directing. Mm. And I mean, and as faithful as he stayed to Lord of the Rings, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I mean, he's said already that he didn't want to alter the story, which is why he's doing it in two parts. But wow. he but he di- is doing some odd stuff, right? Because we've still got um, mm-hmm. uh, Kate Blanchett and mm-hmm. Legolas. I mean, you know, there's still, oh, yeah. you know, 
in order right. for some continuity, I think. He's, oh, really? Yes. Yeah, yeah. he's added yes. a little chunk in Orlando the Orlando Bloom, Kate Blanchett is in there. In Somebody the else, too. Of it? Yeah, towards the end of it. So basically, after after Smog is killed and all that. Oops, spoiler. Um, <laughs> yeah, Smog dies! They're, yeah, they're going yeah, like, to put a little bit in there with with, uh, with uh, Legolas and all that. So. Uh, so essentially, at the Battle of Five Armies. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, essentially, kind of like after, that. After 60 years, is it really a spoiler? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, it's for Brett. Uh, Technically, it always is. I have is. never read it. So I was going to say, jerks, by the way, Smog dies. <laughs> right. Smog's the dragon. Okay, well, that's going to... They killed the dragon. Oh. Yeah, Peter's, There's Peter is pissed. I bet. Yeah. Yes. They had, to, they had to say no dragons were actually harmed in the making of this movie. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> now that I think about it, I've never seen Peter come out on the side of lizards. Yeah? Well, well oh. why not? They're, they're not cute. They're not cute and cuddly. They're not cute and cuddly. They're not sea kittens. Also, they can't kill them in their shelters. So, I mean, was there was was? Do you think there was a PETA monitor on the set for the Spider-Man film? Probably might have been. There were a lot of lizards sure. and a lot of spiders. Could be. Who defended those guys? <laughs> those are arachnids. That's they're gonna not, do it animals. for this show. Thanks everyone for tuning in. <laughs> you right, know the numbers. Soul. We'll be back with more like real soon.